RNC Chairman Michael Steele is unbelievably invoking the Democratic president in his defense because an RNC-funded strip club jaunt that he was not, I repeat, not present for, has some staffers calling for his job. Steele says that he and Obama are held to a different standard because of the color of their skin. Well, we're going to see about that because joining me now to have what's bound to be a lively debate is syndicated columnist, the irreverent. Ann Coulter, and president of the National Action Network, the Reverend Al Sharpton. Thank you so much for being here with me Thank tonight. You. you too. Let's see if you can behave. If not, that's okay. <laughs> Ann, you love Michael Steele. I love him. I love him so much. And um, the reason he's being attacked for all these silly things is because he's so effective. He's attacked for the same reason Rush Limbaugh is, Ronald Reagan was, I am, Sarah Palin is. It's because he's so great. The people, he is being held to a different standard because of his skin color, but not by Americans and not by by Republicans, he's being held to a different standard by Democrats because they're trying to trick stupid Republicans into dumping the first black head of the RNC who's doing a magnificent job. So you're saying this is racist? Well, I've always said Democrats are racist. I think the Reverend agrees with me on that. I don't think so. I don't think uh, you said <laughs> that Democrats were dumping. I think you said stupid Republicans were dumping. Well, they're not. Democrats are trying to trick stupid Republicans into doing well, that. I'm warning them not to. First of all, let me say this. Yes. Uh, I'm uh, certainly one that does not agree on policy issues with Michael Steele, even though he's coming this week to speak at National Action Network's convention. But I think in fairness to him, he did not invoke this. He responded to a question. And I think that uh, it is unfair to say that he invoked it because he was asked, did he feel there was a slimmer margin of error? And he responded with, I think the average African American would respond, yes, there's a slimmer margin of error. So I think he was being honest. I don't think that uh, he invoked the race card. I do think, though, that he, as any head of any company, will have to respond to whatever it is that should have crossed his desk. And that should be not used as a distraction from the issues that you raised about the right. funding. Now, if a chairman sees FEC's filings before they are uh, put in, then he's responsible. If they don't, then he's not. I don't know what the standard is. But I don't think that you can raise a question and then expect the person to answer dishonestly or say that they invoked it. So but, on that narrow right. view, I would agree with the irreverent. <laughs> the irreverent. So the reverend's agreeing with the irreverent. And by the way, I, I don't think he's being held to a different standard by Republicans or, or Americans because he's black. And I did not like him comparing, saying that Obama is either. I think he was just sucking up the to the day. Well, I think that's a social audience. reality that you still have a slimmer margin of error for oh, people Oh, I think that's color. totally not true. Well, Most of the Republicans attacking him on that, by the way, are black Republicans who say, why did you drop that? That's not true. He responded to, to a question. To, so he should have said that there's not a slimmer margin of error for No, I thought Americans? it was an excellent way to appeal to a liberal audience. That's all I'm saying he was doing. He knew it was a liberal, what was it, ABC? What, yeah. ABC, NBC? He's I think to the, if you look at double-digit unemployment, so black to white, if you look at the education I think there's but enough data to at, say look, there's going, a slimmer margin of error for but, a black citizen. But if you really think so, but that, on the should merits. he have answered that way? Or should he have just sidestepped oh, the question? it's a spontaneous conversation. This is an example of what I mean by the way he is being attacked for every little thing in a spontaneous conversation. As the Reverend says, a question was brought up to him. Okay, maybe I would have changed a word here or there. And the same thing with the Voyeur Club. I mean, just to give that as an example of an utterly unfair attack, this tacky club out in L.A. Not only was he not there, he was on a plane at the time. Even if he looked at the receipts coming into the RNC and he doesn't, some accountant does, how is the accountant going to know what the voyeur club is? There are a lot of perfectly respectable bars and restaurants with names like Scandal. How do you know what that is? To, to even make an issue of that, and particularly when the former co-chair of the DNC had a major fundraiser gala, it wasn't fundraiser gala, at the Democratic National Convention in 2000 at the Playboy Mansion, that was Loretta Sanchez, when you have Harold Ford going okay. to the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> These are Democratic representatives who actually okay. went to Playboy events, and they're trying to act like Michael Steele, some low-level person who's been fired since then, is a totally fake issue because he's effective. All right, we're going to have to leave it right there unless you've got some receipts you want to produce. <laughs> and I Walter just thought it was reference. interesting that she put <laughs> Ronald Reagan in the same breath as herself and Rush Lumbaugh. Okay, there you go. No.